and it does not my cost of living but it ends up eventually like a chain reaction cause and effect it brings my cost of living down eventually then i got to see that as a good thing leading to more and more toward my freedom my safety and my security you understand because your freedom and security are a part and parcel of this thing okay and ultimately our happiness and the prosperity and the standard of living all that comes with it your joy and your peace of mind all those good things I wouldn't mind being a, quote, spoiled brat. In fact, I think I would actually enjoy being a, quote, spoiled brat, but only if everyone was also able to be a spoiled brat. And I've said that in other words before, and that's what I'm talking about. Sure, I could enjoy driving a uh, 2018 Corvette off the lot if you could afford to do it, you know? And if she could afford to do it, and anybody else that wants to drive a 2018 Corvette off the lot. And I wouldn't grudge you to own a beautiful home in Santa Cruz and Los Angeles and Hawaii and New York and Chicago and Europe. Wherever you want, the Fiji Islands, I just don't care. That's fine. Okay, because if those are the things I want for myself and my children... I want you to have it. So if you call it a spoiled brat, fine. So what Victor Hugo said was true in this paradigm. Prosperity makes monsters. Adversity makes men. But it changes entirely, okay? The paradox is ended. If everybody is free, if everybody is prosperous, if everybody is equal in that regard, and righted by God, it's understood that it's God's planet. And we have a right to share in the inherent wealth of this planet. That's not radical. That's not off the wall. That's not uber liberal. Okay, it is what it is. It's just the state of affairs. It should be and will be when God gets his way. So what you need to be ready for, get ready for, is very clear. It's not a secret. And that's it. That's it. Ultimate universal prosperity around the world and it has absolutely nothing to do with money. Money doesn't have to be in the picture at all. No form of money. Not Bitcoin, not gold, not oil, not stocks, not bonds, not fiat currency, not digital currency, not cryptocurrency. Nothing. Nothing. It has nothing. Because those things have no intrinsic value. Unless you're using the gold for some electronics or the silver in that way or, you know, other precious metals. No. No. So... That's it. Unless they have a utilitarian industrial use, they really have no intrinsic value. Oil, of course, does have an intrinsic value, right? But the other stuff is just just made up. You know, that other wealth that just, well, it's money. It's as good as money, my stocks and bonds and my investments, and I could liquidate them so it's a fungible asset, and I could turn it into fiat currency, which is the exemplification of money, right? In its truest sense, it's just fiat currency okay so that's the point prosperity will not have anything to do with money someday that's what's coming to the earth the earth is going to be cleansed like a diseased cancerous cell on the body of god that day is coming that day most certainly is coming if you believe your bible any of you christians out there remember that and that's what you should be telling other people. That's comforting. That's encouraging to know with certainty that God's will is going to be firmly established upon the earth. And only those that want to be in that paradigm, in that reality, that new reality, will be there. Because God's not going to force anybody to be there. It doesn't want to be there, right? That's, that's not his way. He gives free will choice. And so all the others are going to go to hell. If you'd be miserable in a world without money, without some way to have an advantage over your the other inhabitants of that place in that world, then don't expect to be there. It's as simple as that. It is truly acutely agonizing for me to witness the magnitude of success the globalists have had in convincing many through gaslighting techniques, which is psychological warfare. I call it psycho-spiritual now because everybody says it's a spiritual warfare at the end of the day, and I do agree with that. This is good against evil. This is Satan against God, challenging God, rebelling against God's goodness, and it'll never succeed. It might appear to be succeeding at times, but if you look at the end from the beginning, you see it's untenable. It cannot in the long run. It's like a pyramid scheme. 
it's all they've got because it's insanity. It's, saying, it's trying to convince everybody to just keep buying into insanity and perpetuity. But eventually some generations have come along and say, wait a minute. I, this is just getting worse. I'm just handing the ball of misery to the next generation, and they're going to have to hand a bigger ball of misery to that generation. And so where are my great-grandchildren, my great-great-grandchildren in this scheme of things? You understand it's untenable. So um, these gaslighting techniques can't work in perpetuity. Uh, to believe that the New World Order cabal are altruistic And perverted philosophy of things like wealth redistribution, peace, through perpetually creating and introducing and promoting one class of civilization after another, and that their lust for depopulation to save the earth is scripturally justified when the opposite is true. Sometimes when I write too long of a um, paragraph, or even a sentence in this case, I get it uh, a little conflated and mixed up and convoluted in my own head, but um, the gist of this is that... Um, you know, these people want you to believe that they're altruistic. They're the good guys. And the people that oppose them are the enemy. They're the bad guys. That's how they want the division to work. But they're big, fat liars. The same thing they accuse their enemies of, their adversaries, their nemeses of, they are doing in your face if you look at them. And they're being exposed. Thank God for that. They're being disempowered through that exposure because they can't get away with it anymore. That's it. I mean, the, the jig is up once they get exposed. Once enough people, a critical mass, see it, then we just phase them out. We just don't listen to them anymore. We disempower them that way. And they hate it. They, they're anti-egalitarian. They're anti-American. They're anti-equality. They're anti-freedom for the masses. Okay, they're anti-prosperity for the masses. Do you understand? They're anti-safety and security for the masses. Make no mistake about it. I know for certain what I'm talking about there. They're haters of humanity. And when you all figure that out, and all they've got left up their sleeve is, well, yes, because the masses are destroying the planet. They're fingering you and me because you drive a car, because I drive a car, because you use utilities. They're fingering you and I when they've got the carbon footprint, each one of them, of 10,000 men. Do you understand how inconsistent, how hypocritical that is? How repugnant that is to the heart and mind of God and all decent, righteous, and upright human beings out there? I can't stand them. I, I cannot tolerate evil men. And that's who is still at the top, but not for long quickly going down if it's the right time in history if God allows Trump to succeed okay and I do believe he's a good guy I do believe he's God's servant I do believe that folks I strongly implore all honest and devout believers in true capitalist precepts, such as free market, supply and demand, and basic progress across the board, socially, politically, and economically speaking, not to unwittingly defend or even tolerate any aspect of crony capitalism, as that is the method being employed by the evil-doing globalists to induce to bring on permanent, perpetual wealth division, imbalance, wealth imbalance, and disparity, wealth disparity between the people and themselves. And then they call it communism or socialism. It's a pretext, it's a guise to consolidate everything. <clears throat> 